If you're into photography, you'd be into Imaging DNA. Check out their website at imagingdna.com. Hey, welcome to the trailer. Come on in. <laughs> Testing one, two. Rainy Monarchs interview. Check. Awesome. Hello. All right. Paint. Paint. <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg Barrett. And I'm Michael Eisenstein. Yay. Well, thanks for being on the Trailer Talks. Appreciate it. Yay, thanks, thanks for having us. Awesome. Can you describe your journeys thus far? And I know they're two different stories. Well, you can go first. Well, I uh, started playing guitar at age 14, got pretty serious about it right after. Went to school for music um, in Boston. Joined a band there. We had some pretty good success toward the world for a number of years. Did a number of years kind of as a sideman for a few other touring bands. Moved to LA to get off the road after I had kids. Met Greg shortly thereafter. Um, and we started collaborating on this project about five years ago. Cool. Yeah. Um, I started playing guitar in high school uh, at like 18. And uh, I learned one chord and then it was like, it's time to start a band. Like I, that was really, I didn't, the, the music part of it wasn't as important to me as the hats and outfits. Um, and so uh, I played in sort of slightly punkish bands through college and then I got in the theater department and then um, I sort of had my, you know, I had my fingers in a few things and, um, uh, and moved back to San Francisco and um, uh, was playing in a band and then got in an improv group uh, because I was, uh, and then I was with uh, another a comedian named Margaret Cho, and Margaret's like, you should try stand-up, and I was like, all right, and I gave it a shot, and then put all my eggs in the comedy basket, and I did stand-up for a long time, and then I became a writer, a, a consultant on the show Sex in the City, mm -hmm. and I um, uh, inadvertently told a girl that a guy that wasn't having sex with her was uh, just not that into her, and then that became a storyline, and then it became a book and then they made it into a movie and then I had a nervous breakdown and then I started taking guitar lessons with Mike so that's how <laughs> that's how that that's how that all goes that minute when you guys decided to do something together what was that tell us the story about that well it was sort of it I mean it kind of evolved over it what had happened was I wanted a piece of music to go on stage to so I I I told Mike I said I have this sort of bolero-esque jam and I want to record this as like a thing that I can play when I'm in, um, in the clubs. And so we recorded this song that I, I sort of described it, right? I like. Yeah, I mean, I remember it very specifically. He had this little riff and he said, I want, I like surf guitar, I like lots of reverb, I like brass, like quadrophenia, and the clash. Can it combine those things? And I sort of thought about it and said, yeah. And that's still kind of the cookbook for the band to this day. Cool. And tell me about the new album, because I was watching the run-up for it, and it was like, it's almost here, it's almost here. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it, what's fun about the, um, you know, all the new media stuff is it gives you an opportunity to sort of roll things out, and I always like, you know, it's like when you're in the movie theater at Christmas, and there's the, just a bat, and then it's like, you know, and a date, you know, and you go, oh, wow, and then there's the, tra <laughs> then there's the teaser, then there's the trailer and that thing, and, and you really do have the time, especially as you're acting as your own record company, to get people excited about the record. And I think we both, we knew we had something really cool and um, and we also had a, you know, there was sort of an image campaign that went with it that sort of, you know, was sort of sexy and, you know, sort of matched the record. Like everything's, this, with, with this record, everything sort of fell into place. But we also have a really, a really loyal um, fan base. We have a really, and a very generous one as well, so. Yeah, and clearly they think you guys are wonderful because they're constantly sending in pictures of t-shirts, tattoos of your logo on themselves. It's yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, yeah, there were people that made covers, their own covers of the record. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. It's flattering. You know, I, the tattoo, I... We just received an email this morning where someone wrote lyric to one of our instrumental songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The tattoo makes me nervous. I know the guy who got, has the tattoo now, Eric, and I said... I'm not even that committed to this band. I mean, I love you, but you know, you know, who knows? Some tattoo people are just always the wheels always turning. What's the next one going to be? And yeah, I'm sure yeah. you saw that line of bones. And yeah, it's a cool graphic. It I mean, is. I it's, it a, is. it's a neat graphic, regardless. Mm -hmm. You know. 
So what's the coolest thing about being you guys? Um, the coolest thing? The coolest thing about being us? We just got a bunch of free guitars. Yeah. That was a pretty that's so cool funny. thing. That's exactly that's cool. what I thought. That's, exactly, that's the first thing that came into my head, and I was like, like a guitar, a guitar company from here in LA. Yeah, they've been really nice to come to shows. I mean, they're like they're, Schechter guitars, by the way. Schechter, yeah. Schechter. And it's interesting because you know we are. I mean, I guess we would be in the surf genre, for lack of a better description. But we had there are certain tropes in that world. You know, certain, you know, there's certain equipment that you expect and there's certain things. And certainly we use Fender amps and we do use all the reverb. But the idea that we have different looking guitars that we're not going in the Jaguar Fender Strat vein and that we dress differently, that we present the music differently, you know, it was interesting to us. And the idea of like trying to make these Schecters wor work and finding that they did and that in, and in fact, there are different sounds on this record because of it, you know, that are neat. You guys are really well put together visually you're designed well mm -hmm. responsible for that you guys you guys do that um it's a collaboration yeah you know i mean i'm i'm the guy that's always thinking about what well, what are we gonna how's it gonna look what color is it gonna be and then we have um this incredibly uh talented uh art director named angelo who's my partner in this little t-shirt venture and you know we Tell him ideas. I got a lion with a crown and a, and a, he's wearing a suit. But then Angelo makes it and you're like, oh my God, that's better than I thought it would be. You know, so, and also sometimes it just... A classic example is like, we'll be in the studio and, you know, putting together a horn arrangement. It's like, that's sharp 11 in the second trumpet. Is that going to work? And he's like, what if the t-shirt was green? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, what if we, wait a minute. What if it's... <laughs> I'm not sure about checkerboard anymore. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, but I think there's also like, there's also when things just sort of come together, you know, like the bands has sort of evolved and, um, and we did this photo shoot with Mike's sister, Justine, who's an incredible photographer. And we had this model who was a friend of ours off of Facebook and, and it just all came together. The, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, it's fun. It's fun to try and, because I think anymore you have to get people's attention. And you have to know what you are, you know. And it's as much about what you aren't as what you are, you know. So that if you present something that people can learn two sentences go, yeah, they're the surf band that wears sweat. There's sweaters. These sweaters. I don't know why sweaters is a big thing for <laughs> the them. The <letter> sweaters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like there's there's something that people can attach to to remember you by because you know um, there's a. I mean, there's more music out there now than there's ever been, and it's hard to remember who everybody is. Mm -hmm. You know. Absolutely. So what's the hardest part about being you? We're playing a young man's game. And we're not young men, and we have kids, and we have families, and we have, you know, o overhead yeah, to get through responsibilities and bottom lines that are trickier to navigate, you know, at our stage in life of trying to be an original rock band. That's yeah. the hardest part. Yeah, right, exactly. Like for him, to, you know, Mike tours with Melissa Efford, so he can just go out and do that. That's and it's. <laughs> but when you're 22 and have a part-time job. It's no problem to get in the van yeah, right. for three weeks and six sure. weeks. You're not risking anything. You're not ruining anybody else's life. Yeah, that's that's the thing. The hardest part is right, exactly what Mike said. Being old, trying to do something new, you know? Right. What was last year's pinch me moment for pinch you guys? Pinch me moment. I think it was kind of the launching that crowdfunding campaign and getting that overwhelming response right off the bat. I mean, we set... What we thought was a modest budget, but you know, our original goal was, I mean, I knew it was going to cost more than this to make the record, but we have to go out of pocket a little bit, we'll figure it out. And we reached that goal in four days or four something. Four days. Yes. I mean, that was sort of like, the, like, this is going to happen and we're going to have all the money we needed and maybe a little more to really do this right. I think that was the, the exciting thing because we always shoestringed our recordings together with favors and, you know, and done it. Um, beyond cost effectively, like just low budget. And we were able, knew we would be able to do this record the way we wanted it to be done, which was a thrill. So what's the one thing that you guys think everyone should know about living a life creatively? Um, wow. I, for me, kind of at least where I'm at these days is to have several things going. And if you know, if you if you're just doing one project for me, that becomes 
difficult. Like I like, cause they, they are all gonna ebb and flow. So if I have like a bunch of things kind of t taking a parallel road together, sometimes one becomes the priority, sometimes the other becomes the priority. And also, um, if you're trying to make a living at your creative endeavors, there's gonna be ebbs and flows in, in those too, as far as the earning goes. So if you have a few irons in the fire, um, it makes for an easier survival. <laughs> People have a tendency to get in the way of their own creative process by editing as something's happening because it doesn't seem like something they've heard before, something they think is right. And generally, those are the impulses that are putting you on a path to you know, do something somebody hasn't done before. It's going to feel awkward and strange. You know what I mean? That's why it's going to be different. And, um, and if we already have one of what you're doing, we may not need it, if that makes sense. You know, one of the nicest things people have said about this record is, I don't know how to classify this, but it works. It starts and it's the same band all the way through, but it's not... There's not, you know, and I think, not that we set out to do that, it just happened. You know, it's the music that occurred to us as we were playing it. Like, oh, okay, let's do this. You know, some of the songs were written on the spot, and they just happened. And we didn't go, well, that's not a surf song, or that's not a ska song, or that, you know, we just, it's insane. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's sometimes you, 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 you've created your own rules that don't make sense, mm -hmm. and then you have to break those rules. You have to, you know, you have to give yourself a break and go, what? Why have you decided that's the way it is? Why don't you try it the other way? you know, and allow yourself your own creative process. Where can people find out more about you guys? Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, there, uh, we have a, a website, theradingmonarchs.com, which has little blogs and links to buy music or stream music. Um, there's a Facebook page, all the normal places. Yep, Twitter. We tweet, yeah. we tweet quite a bit. And then at USA Mike and uh, at Greg, uh, Gregory Barrent. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, we try and sort of cover that whole thing. We both Instagram pretty well. Mm -hmm. I'm Sweater GB, and he's the Eisenstein. Yeah. Um, uh, take a listen to the record, Black Sweater Massacre at RainMonarchs.com, and our Bandcamp page, and like us on Facebook, all that stuff. You give it a shot. And especially with this record, people are like, wow. I think most people either haven't heard music like this or are surprised to have music like this, but it, it's maybe the most unobjectionable record ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, it's my new coding music because I'm one of those code geeks. Okay. Yeah. I'm sitting there. You can do, and you can dance to it. You can, yeah. um, you can, you can, you can lay on your floor and ima imagine to it. You know, that's the kind of beautiful thing about it. It's got a score feel to it, you know. Um, I and feel like it's empowering. And being instrumental music too, it doesn't have that thing of words cluttering up your brain and just taking you out of, especially if you're writing, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's, and, and, and nobody wants to hear what I have to say, so that's why there's no words, no singer, <laughs> no lead singer problems. But no, if they want to like, hear what you have to say, they can go see your stand-up. That's <laughs> right, exactly. I put, everything's compartmentalized. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks, you guys, very much. For, Thank you. For being Thank here. you. Yes, it was fun. Appreciate it. While you're out surfing, support the podcast by shopping on Amazon via our corner store at www.thetrailertalks.com. All of our guest publications are out there, so check it out. Yeah, I have a podcast called Walking the Room. Yeah. And um, and Dave comes over and he cuts them all together and you know. Mm. I make sure the t shirts go out. <laughs> so we're working Division on of labor. We were just talking about that this morning. Well, yeah, we were just talking about it. <laughs> it's a great logo. Well, actually we were thinking about rebranding. Yeah. So oh, really? yeah, because um, people actually think that we're a podcast about trailers, which we're not. We're a podcast about creativity. So we have a wonderful um, uh, intern right now who's working hard on that and what are you, you think what are you thinking about changing the name to oh we're not gonna change the name oh yeah okay good no. we're gonna the Just trailer's gonna go make it clearer yeah right yeah right it really we really do have a 1974 terry trailer we really do <laughs> i love this mounting system for the iphone <laughs> i tech and janky that's what we do yeah. <laughs>